Now our long-term goal was to help get a billion people into virtual reality. So let's start off by checking in on how that's going. All right. Now, we have this saying at Facebook that the journey is 1% finished. And in this case, maybe not even quite. But I'm confident uh, that we're going to get there that any VR system that gets to scale needs to have. So first, it needs to be standalone. It's that way there are no wires. Yeah, it's, that way there are no wires that are going to break your feeling of presence or anything like that, and you're going to be able to take it with you. All right, second, it's got to support hands, right? Because that's going to be how we interact with people and objects in a natural way in virtual reality. And third, it has to offer six degrees of freedom. So you can not just uh, walk around or look around, but you can also walk around and move through a virtual space just like you would in a physical one. Right, so if we can bring these three qualities together into one product, then we think that that is the foundation for the ideal form factor for VR. So we've been working on this for years now. And at Connect, for the past couple of years, uh, you've heard me talk about Project Santa Cruz. And today, we have some news for you. I am excited to announce Oculus Quest. It is shipping in the spring, and it is going to cost $3.99. This is it. This is the all-in-one VR experience that we have been waiting for. It's wireless, it's got hand presence, six degrees of freedom, and it runs Rift quality experiences. Full inside out tracking, full freedom to move around, no cables, no external sensors, just really good positional tracking. It's got adjustable fit, so it's comfortable to wear with glasses. It's got built-in 360 audio, even better than what we shipped with Oculus Go, even without headphones. And it is shipping with touch controllers to deliver the same hand presence that you get with Rift. Now, <laughs> now I want to take a moment to, to thank all of you who gave us feedback on this, because you might know that when we started working on this, we were actually planning on building a different input device. But uh, because we got so much feedback that, that the input should be the same as Rift, we went with touch. And now we're doing even more work to bring these ecosystems closer together over time. And by shipping with touch, uh, we're going to be able to work with all of you to bring a lot of the most successful games from Rift to Oculus Quest, including Robo Recall, The Climb, and Moss, just to name a few. And we're going to have more than 50 titles available for Oculus Quest at launch. All right, let's take a closer look. Oculus Quest is an all-in-one VR system. It's just you and your hands, completely free and immersed. With six degrees of freedom, state-of-the-art optics, and built-in audio, you can forget about wires, PCs, and phones. Oculus Quest is ready to play when you are. The headset relies on four ultra-wide angle sensors to map your environment as you navigate through it. And with Oculus Insight tracking, every move you make in the real world translates right into the game you're playing. Combine that with Oculus Touch controllers, and the game is at your fingertips. So when you grab, swing, or cast a spell, you'll feel the power of every gesture. The next level of VR gaming is finally here. Introducing Oculus Quest.
Whoa. There's a cherry down there. Nice grab, nice grab. Nice. Cut up, cut up. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. 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 Oh, it jumped forward wide. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I'm back, everybody. Sit together, all right? Whoa! Whoa. 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 We really think we're onto something significant here. For the first time, you can deliver Rift-like experiences to a much wider audience. Sixdoff and Touch are now the definitive standard for VR games, and Oculus Quest is the first VR headset in this new category. Moving forward, we are going to invest significantly in this new platform. Now, I want to give you a look under the hood of Oculus Quest. And I want to start by talking about the real computer vision magic that makes it all possible. Over the last three years, the Oculus team has built revolutionary inside-out tracking knowledge, technology. That's what we call Oculus Insight. Insight uses four ultra-wide-angle sensors and advanced computer vision algorithms to track your exact position in real time without any external sensors. It's thanks to this technology that you can move around freely, fluidly, and fast with Oculus Quest. It's really cool. Now, let's take a look at how Insight works. First of all, it uses the four wide-angle sensors on the headset to look for edges, corners, and pretty much any distinct feature in the environment. It then builds a three-dimensional map that looks like a sparse point cloud. These are the green and blue dots that you see here. The system combines this map with gyroscope and accelerometer input and generates a very precise estimate of your head position every millisecond. Insight is a very flexible and robust system. It relies on all the different features in the environment for tracking, so floors and ceiling, walls, rugs, art on the wall, window fixtures, curtains, you name it, and even furniture. Now, this flexibility is important, particularly in more challenging environments, like, for example, a room with a super shiny floor or with bare white walls with no texture with nothing on them. And we've tested Oculus Insight in hundreds of different home spaces, and we're going to continue to do that to fine-tune it over time. Now, many of you have built room scale experiences for Oculus Rift. Oculus Insight goes beyond room scale, and it works in much larger spaces without any external sensors. Yeah, in fact, check, check this out. In fact, we have an arena scale demo right here at Connect in the innovation zone that really shows this in action. This thing, I'll tell you, this thing is 4,000 square feet. <laughs> That's right. OMG is right. Um, anyway, you should, definitely, you should definitely check it out. All right. So Oculus Insight, Oculus Insight also powers the Guardian system on Oculus Quest. Just like on Rift, Guardian is what helps keep you safer while you're in VR. And Oculus Insight supports multi-room Guardian. So, <laughs> I love this guy. So, you can easily take your headset to different parts of your home, your friend's home, or your office, and it will remember the Guardian setup for each of those spaces. Oculus Quest is the same optics, uh, has the same optics that we designed for Oculus Go, 
which are the highest quality we've ever made. And we're also adding lens spacing adjustment, that's what you just saw, to help maximize visual comfort. Okay. Now, over the next two days here at Connect, you'll all get a chance to experience Oculus Quest firsthand. We have multiple fully playable demos right on the show floor, like this awesome tennis demo called Tennis Scramble. And I want to show you a sneak preview of some of those right now. And that dystopian future is a real possibility if we don't put people first, if we don't put human connection first. Today, the focus may be more on content, and that's great. But in the fullness of time, I expect virtual reality to be a platform primarily centered around human connection. Looking five or 10 years down the road, this could have really profound impacts on the fabric of society. You know, people often think of virtual reality as a competitor to telepresence. It's not. It's a competitor to real estate. Cities and roads are occupied by the space companies need to connect their employees face to face. Shockingly, this is not a misappropriation of our precious time and space because that is how valuable it is for humans to connect in person. If you could enable even a fraction of that to be done remotely through virtual reality, you will have done tremendous good in allowing society to reallocate some of its most limited resources. Not only would people be able to connect with the people that matter most to them in real life because they're commuting less, but this would also enable access to jobs to those who today have limited opportunity due to geography. This potential to transform the global landscape is incredible, and it's the reason that we're prioritizing the investments to deliver this technology in a human-centric way. You're all already familiar with Oculus Rift, which has been powering great VR experiences uh, with PCs for years now. Earlier this year, we announced Oculus Go, which is focused on entertainment and social use cases and is by far the most affordable way to get into virtual reality. And as you've just heard Mark announce, we are excited next year to launch Oculus Quest. But you're not stopping there. We're also going to work on future technology that will unlock even more. Instead of taking the real world and overlaying virtual objects on top of it, like we plan to do with augmented reality, you can also take real world objects and integrate them into virtual reality so that everything can interact. This is super important for unlocking future use cases like reimagining how we collaborate at work. What you're about to see is actual footage from a prototype of mixed reality shot with the Oculus Quest. So as I put my headset on, we can see the virtual world uh, overlaid on a very, very crude reconstruction of the real world behind it. And here I'm watching a video of my son and I playing with iron powder and a birthday candle for Science Saturday, when I get a notification that my wife sent me some photos on Messenger. And I can go in and browse and pick out a few favorites before it's time to get back to work. The top of my to-do list is to work on my OC5 script, so I better get to it. You can see that I'm able to access my real-life keyboard and desk in front of me while enjoying the boundless space that virtual reality affords me. And then I get a notification that tells me I've got a meeting. My speech will have to wait. I make my way into a virtual room somewhere in the metaverse that allows me to work alongside my team in a persistent environment. Someday there will be people in here, lots of people, imagine it. <laughs> and here comes my colleague now. Now, this is a, yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
I'm just going to assume that applause is for how cute my kids are. So let's just. This is a very early concept, uh, but the ideas are starting to take shape. Being able to connect with people both physically proximate to you and physically distant at the same time has the potential to tremendously broaden our capacity to connect with other people. The difference with you and me is I seize the moment and you with that foolery. Shine like the jewelry. Hit them like boom, what you gonna do to me? But you won't ever beat me, and I'll be out so fast that you won't ever meet me. Don't hate it, I'm the greatest. Stick a slug, well, you see me up big. It's no opposition. Myself is the only competition. So slam, bow, bam, boom. The king is here, make some damn room. years, you've given us over 1,100 Rift titles. And we're already working with developers on games launching well into 2020. The market is growing. And with Touch being the standard for six-off gaming, there are more opportunities for people to compete, conquer, and connect in your games. Just look at Orbis VR, one of VR's first and most successful MMOs where players have spent over 440,000 hours since the game's launch in December. Even more remarkable is that this game was built by a team of two working remotely. With a growing community and eager fans wanting more, Orbis VR is launching a massive expansion early next year with beautiful new visuals, highly customizable avatars, and much more. Jack and Commander Liv are back. So let's drop into Jack's point of view and get a sneak peek at what they've been up to since Lone Echo. Jack? Jack, Jack can you hear me? How did we end up here? You are the only person who calls me Jack. Is that your way of saying you're going to miss me? Anomaly detected. I'm gonna get you patched up. I promise. Not to jinx it, but I think we're actually making progress here. Oh, damn it! I don't know if I can do this, Jack. Your systems are failing. I barely managed to keep your core memory alive. Are you injured? What the hell is this? Jack, please. Good morning, sunshine. Jack! Oh, thank God. Captain Rhodes, report to observation. Don't. avatars. <laughs> Last year, we gave you a glimpse into what we were building. And you might remember my friend Will. Hello again. I'm Will, and I'm delighted to present our new expressive avatars. As you can see, Will has a whole new look. The glasses are finally coming off so you can look into each other's eyes. With our research into simulated eye and mouth movement and micro expressions, it feels so much more natural to interact in VR. With all of these updates, Home's social foundation 
makes it easier to connect with friends and the games you love. But oftentimes, your journey starts even before you put on your headset. The Oculus desktop app is now more personalized, so you can find the most relevant games and stay connected with friends. But what about when you're away from your computer? Currently, there's a mobile app for Oculus Go. We're already seeing people using Rift for work. Our platform has inspired many developers to build new use cases. Iris VR lets architects jump right in at any point during development, so they could preview an entire job site. Skydance Interactive used Medium to build their newest game, Archangel. Previously, concepting something like this custom cockpit would take up to six months, and the team would still have to guess how things would look in VR. But with Medium, the 3D designs took only a week. These are just two examples of many native apps improving workflows across industries. And while not all desktop software has a VR version yet, Dash already brings your PC displays into Rift, and we want developers to use this technology. Introducing hybrid apps. Yes, get excited. It's an entirely new way to bring 2D applications into VR. With a few APIs and a VR viewport, Dash brings software into first-class VR applications. To see what this could look like, we partnered with Algorithmic Labs on an experimental version of Substance Painter. Many artists today use their app to paint 3D models on desktop. But with hybrid app support, artists can move seamlessly from 2D into VR. As you can imagine, manipulating a model in 3D space is so much easier. Just look at how the textures are coming to life on Toby the robot. And Dash automatically brings in all the UI, so it's the same workflow, but now in a 3D space. It's that simple. One app across desktop and VR. There's something wrong, Captain. I need you in the cockpit now. Wow. <laughs> you know, every year when Connect rolls around and I get up on this stage, I remember once again just how special it is to be here. Because I look out at all of you, and what I see is the future. I see a remarkable collection of talented, creative, visionary people, the kernel from which the most important technology of the next 50 years will grow. That's actually only three predictions, because pixels per degree is a function of total resolution and field of view. This is a case where I clearly undershot. Many of you no doubt saw the description of the Half Dome prototype at F8. Half Dome achieved two of my three display predictions two year, three years early. It has a 140 degree field of view and varifocal depth of focus. And while Half Dome has roughly the same resolution as the Rift, 4K panels that would provide 30 pixels per degree over a 140 degree field of view have already been shown publicly, and using one in Half Dome would be straightforward. So I'm comfortable saying that I nailed this prediction. However, one thing that I didn't predict two years ago was equally rapid progress on the algorithms driving varifocal displays. Without varifocal, everything appears blurred when you look at a nearby object, such as this robot's hand, 
an unnatural condition that is obviously not an ideal visual experience. With varifocal, both near and far objects always appear sharp. This is also an unnatural condition that, while better, is still not an ideal visual experience. Fixing this requires rendering depth of field blur that varies depending on where you're looking, which is very challenging to do in a physically accurate manner. However, we've made significant progress on solving this problem with Deep Focus, an AI-driven renderer that can reproduce natural gaze-contingent blur in real time. Here's correct blur when looking at the robot's hand. Notice that the hand is sharp while the background is properly blurry. And here's the correct blur when looking at the far wall. In the coming months, we'll be publishing our Deep Focus research and making the trained networks freely available to experiment with and build upon. Humans, truly lifelike, real-time rep virtual representations of real people, which I didn't think would land within the five-year horizon. That may still prove to be right, but this may be another case where I was insufficiently ambitious because the rate of change is accelerating here too. Consider the face tracking video I showed two years ago. Now contrast that with this. A good morrow to you, my boy. It's healthier to cook without sugar. Thank you, she said. It's hard to believe, off. but one of those is a reconstruction, video. not a video. Approach Can you tell which? Statuesque composure. The one on the right you, is the reconstruction. If you look closely enough, there are imperfections in the neck, the hair, the eyes, and the mouth, but it's impressively close to the real thing. Thank you, she said, dusting herself off. George is paranoid about a few This is a novel machine learning-based approach we call codec avatars. And while it's still in an early stage, if it could be made to work for everyone and included bodies and hands, it would revolutionize how we communicate and collaborate. Put it together with mixed reality, and where you live would no longer have to be tied to where you work. You could visit, really visit, with your family, even if you lived thousands of miles away. And of course, it would enable by far the best multiplayer games ever made. So I'm not betting on having convincingly human avatars within four years, but I'm no longer a productive collaborative environment as well. If all of my four-year predictions come true, and virtual humans also lands, then a virtual workspace that replaces personal computers is a done deal. The only thing that that VR system would lack is true haptic hands, and that may well show up a few years later. Now, imagine that you have that powerful virtual workspace, and then AR glasses come along and let you seamlessly access that same workspace no matter where you are. Here's a picture of a real apartment. Now, here's a reconstruction of that apartment done with com consumer-grade sensors. Every time I see this, I'm astonished at how realistic it looks. It's easy to see how this level of reconstruction will enable virtual teleportation and powerful mixed reality. As we saw, a model of this detail and complexity takes time to construct. Instant real-time capture and reconstruction of the real world is also possible. It won't be as complete and polished, but will let you move around safely, interact with real objects, and mix real with virtual effectively. And that will be here within four years as well. Overall, computer vision capabilities are advancing rapidly, and I'm happy to stick with my prediction of high-quality mixed reality within four years. Now, mixed reality has implications beyond just expanding the range of VR experiences. Once we have good mixed reality, VR and AR suddenly have a great deal in common. For social reasons, you're probably not going to be walking around in public wearing a VR visor any time in the near future, but otherwise, what difference does it make whether the photons showing you the real world come from the real world or from a display. In fact, mixed reality in VR is inherently more powerful than AR glasses because there's full control of every pixel rather than additive blending. VR can also provide a richer experience than AR because the display doesn't have to be see-through, the form factor is much less constrained, and it doesn't have to run off of a battery for an entire day. So the truth is that VR is not only where mixed reality will first be genuinely useful, it will also be the best mixed reality for all.